What is going on guys, I'm Suburban Angling and today I am here to talk to you guys about how to keep your bait alive longer. So I'm not gonna make some super long, super grand intro talking about a lot of stuff that you guys didn't even click on this video to see. I know what you came here for, you wanna know how to keep your bait alive longer and I'm here to show you. So first, I'm gonna show you guys how I do it on a smaller scale operation with you know crappie sized minnows, little fat head minnows. And then I'm gonna show you guys what I do when I'm keeping larger bait fish alive such as you know creek chubs, suckers, or shiners, bluegill or bullhead or any type of bigger bait fish that I'm gonna be using for catfish or walleye and stuff like that. So I got a small scale operation I'm gonna show you. I got a larger scale operation I'm gonna show you in an aquarium. Let's get right to it. One thing I want to warn you guys about before I show you guys how I do this is nothing about this is going to be bougie or fancy. You know what I mean? This is a bare bones, cheap, effective way how to keep your bait alive longer. You know, I'm not going to be showing you guys something that's going to be glamorous or whatever word you want to use. It's not really going to have a lot of eye appeal, but it gets the job done. It just straight up, it keeps my bait alive long and it's cheap and it's effective. And I don't really know how much I need to say those two words together anymore. I just know that that's a fact. This works and you guys no matter how this might how simple this might seem this really does work so anyways let me show you guys the stuff that we're using all right folks so right here is the basic equipment you're gonna need to keep these minnows alive this is literally everything you need let me count real quick one two three four five six things technically seven I know I, I, I know you guys see the aerator there but you don't need this to keep the minnows alive once they're in the bucket but technically seven things. Either way, all really cheap stuff. Let's talk about them. First item and one of the most overlooked things, get yourself a little minnow net like this. You can literally get these at pretty much every bait shop in North America for around a dollar. Get five of them for five bucks because they're pretty easy to lose. I go through shit about one of these a month. I'm always replacing these things, but get yourself these nets for obvious reasons it's really annoying trying to grab the last minnow in the bait bucket and it's also really annoying when all your bait dies because you put some lotion on your hands and suck your hands in the bucket and then you just poison them all you know what i mean so get one of these for multiple reasons convenient and safe for the fish the second thing you need and possibly the most important is some dechlorinator you are not going to be able to keep your bait alive for very long if you don't have this stuff Technically you could, technically you could, but it would be a much longer, more painful, more annoying process, and there would be a lot more steps in between. This takes a lot of those in-between steps away. Get this stuff, it's very cheap. I literally picked up this little, how much is in there? 1.7 fluid ounces, so not a lot in there, but you only need to use about one or two drops per, you know, per time you use it, and it's like $5 a bottle. Get this stuff, it's very important, and I'm gonna explain why soon. All right, guys, so this is probably actually more important than the dechlorinator. I don't know why I said the dechlorinator was most important because this is definitely going to be it, and it's bait. You need bait. If you're going to be keeping bait alive, you probably need bait to keep alive. So this is what I'm rocking with right here. I actually picked these up this morning when I was doing a little bit of crappie fishing, white bass fishing, whatever. But we got two dozen medium-sized fathead minnows. Those are what we're going to be rocking with and trying to keep alive. I'm actually probably going to go pick some more of these up from the bait shop. I bought these today just to use, but we didn't really catch too much. So I'm going to throw them in this bucket, keep them alive. And I'm actually probably going to go pick some, some more up within the next couple days because I know I'm going to be doing a lot of fishing in the upcoming weeks. And I know I'm going to stock up on these minnows because I'm going to be running through them. Trust me. I can assure you that. All right guys, so next you're gonna to wanna to get a five gallon bucket. Really easy to get. You know, you can get those at literally any Walmart, any like Dick Sporting Goods, any tackle shop, any Ace Hardware, like Lowe's, Home Depot, etc. cetera. This goes on and on and on. Five gallon bucket, really easy to find. Go get one. Next, this is kind of an optional item, but you really should have one and it's really easy to get and there's no excuse why you can't find it online or go to your local Bass Pro or Cabela's and get this. Like this is really easy to find and that's gonna be the lid for this bucket. So as you can see, it's nothing fancy. It's literally a plastic lid that fits to the top of any five gallon bucket. Like this is a universal lid. You don't gotta worry about, will this fit my bucket? It fits all five gallon buckets. Like most five gallon buckets have a standard size, rim size and all that, blah, blah, blah. You get it. This bucket, why it's really nice, or excuse me, this bucket lid, why it's really nice is it actually has a smaller lid on the top so you can still gain access to your fish, has holes on the top for air, obviously so oxygen can get through, and it has a nice little drilled out hole 
for your aerator tube to go through so it keeps the whole setup like nice and clean. You don't got some big tube hanging out, you know what I mean? You can just keep that thing stuffed in that hole, keep your aerator right on top of your bucket or wherever you want to have it to the side, taped up or whatever, but you don't have to worry about that tube, you know, not being managed. It gets managed really nicely by that little drilled out hole that they put right there for you. And then obviously, since we're talking about the aerator tube, we have to talk about the aerator. These things are really simple to use and really cheap to get. This right here, I picked up at my local pet store for $11.99 and it's powerful enough for up to 20 gallons. So obviously this is a five gallon bucket, so that's gonna be plenty of power, but that's why I bought that thing. Cause like number one, it was cheap, but number two, it's powerful. So let's say, you know, if my other aerator for my bigger scale operation, I'm gonna show you guys l later was to die. I would still have this and this is still plenty of powerful enough to power that as well. Like I said, it's really simple to operate, plug in the wall and it gets right to pumping. Show you guys that real quick. Boom, she's plugged in and then I don't know if you can hear that, but it's vibrating now. I'm just gonna move that to the side real quick to show you. Sorry for that annoying noise, but it's working. We got some bubbles. Pretty simple setup. You notice there's already water in there. So let me show you guys what I did to make that water safe for our minnows. All right, so earlier you heard me mention Dechlorinator. This is the one that I personally use. It's by a brand called Seachem. I've seen a few other YouTubers use it coincidentally, but I actually didn't you know, use it because they did. I just went to my local pet store and this is the one that they had. But, you know, any Pet Smart, any Pet Supplies Plus or whatever the names of the pet stores are that are near you are going to have these. And it's really cheap, $5 a bottle. I'm going to show you guys how I use it. But, I mean, it's pretty simple. Like, you literally just open the cap right here. And then if you read the instructions on the back, it'll tell you that for this particular one, it's two drops per gallon. So, obviously, that's going to be a five-gallon bucket. Usually when I fill it up, I fill it up almost all the way with about four gallons, which again, if you heard me correctly, that's going to be two ga two drops per gallon. So then I do, you know, a significant amount of drops, about six, seven, eight drops. Then I'll put my fish in there because there's already a little bit of water in that bucket. I'll transfer the water from that bucket and the fish from that bucket into this one. And then I'll do about one more drop to just make up for the added water from the middle bucket. After that, I'm all good. So I already showed you guys the minnows that are in that bucket and I already showed you guys, you know, how I set up the bigger bucket. So now off camera, I'm going to transfer those minnows to that bucket and just kind of show you guys how the whole setup works and show you guys how happy the minnows are after they're in their new home. All right, guys. Well, I have transferred the minnows. They look pretty happy in there. There's obviously plenty of space. Like here, let me zoom out real quick. Like if you look, there's plenty of space for these minnows. And like, they're all on the bottom of the bucket right now. They're all on the bottom half of this bucket. There is so much water in there. You could fit so many more minnows in there and it would, they, it would, they would thrive. You know what I mean? So like, this is two dozen. You know, you could comfortably fit like 10 dozen large fat heads in there and they would, there would still be plenty of room for them to swim around. That's how awesome these five gallon buckets are when you're dealing with these small bait fishes. These are small bait fish. This is plenty of room for them. They're used to this. They're used to living in puddles. If you fish rivers like I do, you'll even notice there can be schools of like a hundred minnows in some puddle that's not even connected to the main river. And then obviously, yes, once it rains, they go back to the main river, but it's pretty amazing what little water these minnows can survive in as long as they have the proper oxygenation. Another thing I want to mention about, you know, once you transfer the minnows is before you actually do the transfer, yes, you want to use some dechlorinator, but also in the five gallon bucket, you know, I know you guys noticed that I already had water in there. Make sure you let that water sit and make sure you let the water that the minnows are in, like the smaller bucket, make sure you let that sit for at least, you know, 30 minutes to an hour so it can get used to the temperature of the room you're going to have it in before you transfer it. So that way you're not putting like 50 50 degree, you know, minnows that are used to 50 degree water in a bigger bucket that you've just filled with, let's say 65 degree water, because then what's going to happen is those minnows are going to go in a shock and they're going to die. So just make sure that you're letting your water sit, like I said, for at least 30 minutes to an hour before you transfer it to allow the fish to get used to the temperature of the room that you're going to have them in. All right, guys. So now I'm actually in the room where I keep my bigger bait fish 
bigger bay fish being suckers, creek chubs, bullheads, bluegills, you know, anything you're using for catfish, anything you're using for pike or muskie, walleyes, whatever. You know what I mean? This is what you got to do to keep the bigger stuff alive. It is really, and quite honestly, it's the exact same thing you do for the minnows, just on a bigger scale. Instead of a five gallon bucket, now I have a 10 gallon aquarium. You know what I mean? Like it's the same thing. I still use the dechlorinator the exact same way. I still let the water settle for an hour after I put it in the aquarium to make sure that you know it becomes the same temperature has the room that it's going to be in because like i said you don't want to put these fish into shock right you don't want to take some really cold water that you just got the fish in from the bait shop and then throw it into your you know warmer tap water and then there goes all your investment or even worse you know if you're a person like me who casts nets and gets your bait like that you just spent two or three hours cast netting you know you come home with a bucket full of suckers the worst thing you can do is not let that water settle and not let them get used to the temperature of your room and just throw all these suckers into a a bucket that of water they haven't been in yet and they just all died that's just so i want to show you guys that's the aquarium that i'm using and just show you guys how happy these fish are and show you guys the little setup i got and maybe you can do something similar for yourself all right so here we go nothing glamorous i'm going to show you guys the whole thing i'm just going to show you this one side of the aquarium but as you can see we have plenty of lively suckers we actually got a shiner right there another shiner right there we got a couple of different species in this aquarium right here and you're going to notice i have a towel over the top of it and that's pretty much to keep it as dark as possible in there obviously i have lights on in my room so i can record this video but most of the time the lights aren't on in here and the towel on the side just makes it so when I'm walking back and forth they don't see me as much and they're a little bit less stressed out because when the fish are stressed they produce ammonia that comes out of their body and then you got to use more of your dechlorinator which the dechlorinator also gets rid of ammonia so you got to use more of that stuff and it just ends up not wasting money I mean it's a few drops but you know what I mean not stressing out the fish is just good for you and it's also good for them so let me take this towel off real quick and kind of show you what I got going on you're actually going to notice I have this big grate on the top. You can see with what it what it looks like. You know, it's a cooking grate for a fire. But I just use it to make sure these things don't jump out because stupidly, you know, the, when I first got all these suckers, I literally let them, you know, I, I put them all in there. I went to bed, woke up the next morning, and five, like, 10-inch suckers had jumped out of there. And just, you know, I, I didn't like that. So I put a grate on top of it because... You know, I don't want to lose my investment. And there are still so many suckers in there, and I'm not even done. Like, I'm probably going to put another half dozen in there because it'll definitely fit it. I mean, they, you know, there's a room. It might not look like there's room, but, you know, you could easily fit another six, you know, eight-inch suckers in there, no problem. And they'll stay alive. And, you know, I'm planning on using these things pretty soon, too. You know, I'm not just going to, you know, have these suckers in there for six months and overpopulate them. And, you know, th these things are going to get used within the next month or two. So don't think that I'm going to put like 60 suckers in here and they're all going to stay alive for six months. You know what I mean? These suckers are probably all going to be gone within the next two months, but they will be replaced by more suckers because I got really good spots to cast net these things. So I'm not even worried about it. But I mean, look at these things, man. They're happy. They're thriving. They are absolutely chilling. You know what I mean? No floaters, nothing of the sort. And the water's pretty clear too. I just changed it out this morning. So pretty awesome stuff, guys. Pretty awesome stuff. One thing I want to mention before I leave you guys is this is a really simple process and really easy to do. But once you, you know, you have the fish comfortable in the fish tank or in the bucket, wherever you leave them, make sure you're changing your water. Okay, it's really easy to keep them alive. But one thing that a lot of people will forget to do or overlook is once that water gets cloudy, make sure that you're changing it out. You know what I mean? Take 60% of that old water in there, go to your sink, get some new, fresh, cold water, add some of that dechlorinator so you know the ammonia and all the stuff, the chemicals they put in our tap water doesn't kill those fish in your bucket and you'll be good to go. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me in this video. I really hope you enjoyed and I sincerely hope you learned something. That was the whole point of me making this video. You know, as a content creator, of course, I want you guys to click on the video. Of course, I want the views, but I also want there to be some benefit for you, you know, when you watch the video. And I hope you feel that you definitely gained some knowledge after watching. If you have any more questions about what you saw today, if there were some things that I wasn't clear enough on, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will answer any of your, you know, 
know questions, any of your concerns, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I try to answer pretty much every single comment I get, and if you look on any of my videos, you know, it's really evident that I do do that. I am very active in the community, and I'm very active with the people that watch my videos, and I try to, you know, always stay humble and remember that I couldn't do stuff like this without people like you who are clicking on these videos. So continue to do what you're doing, continue to leave your likes, leave your comments, I really appreciate it. Thank you.